If I was to say one bad thing about ARCAD, it would be the simple fact that their basic libraries are absolutely terrible. That's why in today's video, we're gonna be breaking down the best add-on library money can buy. What's going on guys, my name is David Tomic. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And today we're talking about the 4D library. Now I wanna get on the record, this video is not sponsored by 4D library. I have no affiliation with them. I just simply use their products and think they deserve to be showcased a little bit more. We're gonna break down exactly what is in the 4D library, what you can use and enhance your documentation with, and what I personally use and how I use it. Let's start by actually figuring out how you download 4D library. It's incredibly simple. All you do is jump onto 4dlibrary.com.au. It is an Australian program, it is an Australian website, and it is designed for the Australian market, hence why I actually use it so much and genuinely really love it. Now, the 4D Library website, in full disclosure, is pretty basic, it is pretty boring. It is very, very technical. It is not something you're gonna jump on and go to, wow, this is the best website I've ever seen, but you're only there to get the core information download the library and get out. So the 4D library is updated every single year and continues to get updated every couple of months as the owner continues to work on it. If you go to key features up top, you'll see it's been running for a very, very long time and it is continuing to be updated in all of these sections across 20 different components. I believe if you actually wanna download the 4D library and purchase it, when you go across to purchase, you have to actually email the company and set up your profile and everything through them directly rather than on the website as a direct purchase. So overall, the subscription plans start at $650 per year per license which isn't a huge amount when you're working in a big firm, but it might be quite a large amount if you're working as a small firm. But overall, generally, that is the very basics of the 4D library. And now I think it's time to actually dive in to what the 4D library is capable of. So if we jump into ArcCAD 25 and load up the current version of the 4D library, it's not gonna look any different to anything else until you start actually going into these objects. So if we'll start with doors, for example, doors is one of my most used categories of the 4D library. It has a number of items that are just significantly better than the standard ARCHICAD doors. There are still some things that the ARCHICAD doors do better, like screening options and louvers over the top, but the 4D library does an overall better user experience and it is simply easier to use from a general day-to-day -day practice. If we start with the external multi-door as an example, it will give you some very simple overall door styles. You can change how the overall leaf looks an immense amount of ways and you can basically work through all of these settings to make this door customized exactly how you like it. So let's say we want a glass door instead and we want to highlight over the top. Everything is automatic, parametric, and super simple to use. If we continue to quickly flick through these objects and settings, you can see that the frames are thicker. You can adjust side light sizes, sash sizes. You can customize the side light. You can add all sorts of different sill settings, sill profiles, corner settings. We can even go into some great architectural hinges and door details, even creating your own custom handles. So we can just continuously make this door look exactly like it would be on site and document it 100% correctly. We also have the garage door, which is an extremely useful feature because the garage door provides multiple options as well as panel styles. So let's say we didn't want a four panel, we wanted a plain door or we wanted some windows at the top. All of these changes are so simple. Materials we can even quickly change. And then that way, if we wanted to change anything, we don't really have to go too deep into the settings. So personally, 4D doors is definitely one of the best things about the 4D library as well as the 4D windows. So if we jump into the 4D windows, you'll see there's a variety of different window styles. In a recent update, they launched this Jason Residential Windows Suite which is one of the largest Australian manufacturers of windows. Personally, we don't use Jason windows too often, so we don't actually use that feature. It is a very good feature. It does showcase all of their styles built in and the configuration modes updated into it. So if you were using JSON Windows, it would be so easy to use and so simple to document. What we do use instead is a multi-layered 4D window and a layered 4D window, which basically allows you to create any architectural style of window you're looking for without having to create multiple windows you can just simply have one and then one on the window schedule. Sliding doors as well have some great features in them. Again, all of these settings are completely not correct. They've just been dumped into a random file. So these would come up properly if you were to actually import this library properly. But the sliding doors have some immense features. So for example, you can very quickly and rapidly adjust this door and have it slide in any direction that you want, increase the overall width of the door within seconds, 
automatically customized to brick sizing or to whatever you've defined as a custom size. Again, we have a very similar settings that we had in those previous door settings where we can increase highlights, introduce them, have we see fit, introduce side lights if we wanted to and just keep this door going to the exact specification we really, really need. What you'll also notice in one of the corner settings is if we change this to a 90 degree corner, you automatically get a silicon joint. So you tick that box, it takes away the column and you're able to create a silicon joint in your corner so easily without having to fluff around with all of the other parametric settings. I did mention previously that one of the drawbacks of this is it doesn't come with any external shading. It does, however, come with internal blinds and roller shutters. Now, both those items are relatively standard, relatively basic. If you're an ArcCAD user, you may or may not have noticed this desk mat behind me. The desk mat is basically an ArcCAD shortcut cheat sheet printed directly on your desk. So you will never ever forget the best ArcCAD shortcuts to make your workflow significantly easier. The desk mat is designed with Mac and PC shortcuts directly inputted depending on your preference. It comes in three colors and two styles, so be sure to check it out at davidtomich.com.au. It's when we dive in to the ArcCAD objects library and look at the 4D library itself that we see these huge improvements into what this product can actually produce. So if we jump into objects and open up the object settings tool, you'll see we have our 4D library already linked in. If I quickly run through all of these objects to show you what they can do, I'm gonna point out what I use specifically and why. So in the site and landscaping tool, you'll see a number of objects available to you. One of the best objects is the simple north tool because it's so much better than the standard ArcCAD available. The cones of vision and the cutoff drain are also incredibly helpful when you're documenting R codes and you're going through planning processes. So both of these are used and they are quite helpful. The 4D library has its own scheduling for its doors and windows. You can still introduce them back into the ArcCAD schedules and you can use these schedules individually. It just really depends what your preference is and how you wanna go about scheduling. The balustrading and fencing tool has been incredibly useful if I'm being completely honest. The 4D balustrade is miles ahead of the actual balustrading tool available in ArcCAD, just for its simplicity, not for anything else. Colorbond fence is obviously one of the most common fences in Australia, so having that tool available to you is again, very, very user-friendly and very easy. The ArcCAD 4D staircase is again, something that I prefer over the ArcCAD default. The staircase, once again, just so much easier to use, so much more user-friendly, and you can document exactly what you need without having to go through 600 different million options. Everything is linked to Australian standards. You don't have to consider rises and runs. You can simply type in, let's say that's gonna rise two meters. Is it gonna be compliant? Mm, not really, so let's drop that down to 10 stairs. Is it gonna be compliant? Still no, jump to 11. Yes, we're now compliant. Accessories into concrete and masonry. These we don't go into too much personally because we tend to use the CI tools instead of the 4D library for the coverings and wall claddings. It's just more so because that's how the template's been set up for so long rather than anything else. However, they do have the roof covering accessories and they do have the cornices and the 4D cornices accessories. In addition, you have even more roof tools like a, cool, a bull nose veranda 4D. In the country, a lot of people want still bull nose verandas. So this is just so complicated to create in ArcCAD, whereas it is an automatic object and the parametrics just make everything so simple. There is cranked 4D beams for all of your cranked roofs. There is PFCs, there's multi gables, all of these which we use, the 4D U-beams and the full finial sets. There is some amazing little gems hidden in the roof that we definitely use in practice a lot. Skylights and solar tubes, I don't tend to use the 4D solar tube too often. I do use more so the 4D skylight library, but these turbo vents, for example, are a great addition to any roof plan. Roof plumbing again, 4D library, downpipes, rain heads, Soak wells and rainwater tanks all get used quite often. The rain head in particular is a great object. Jumping ahead a little bit further to wall trims, the 4D awning is an incredible tool. It is something that we use in practice all the time. Some of these others, not so much. The 4D Dato tool can be used for window surrounds very simply, very easily. And it is rarely and seldom used, but it is still used every now and again. The cabinetry is where 4D library does tend to shine again. I know ArcCAD has stepped up their game in 25 and again in 26 to be able to produce better cabinetry, but 4D still does it so much better. We have all of our default cabinetry set up by 4D library themselves, so you don't have to tweak too much. 
Like for example, you have a full microwave recess and just like every other 4D library tool, all of their settings are so easy to use. You don't have to worry about trying to figure out what everything is, how it works. You just simply click through the animated pictures and make it exactly how you need it to be. The 4D cabinetry continues. There's a lot more features in that. There's compound cabinetries. There's accessories and appliances connected to it. The appliances, again, do get used quite often. The 4D dishwasher is a beautiful object, as you can see. The ovens, the hot plates, the microwaves, the stoves, all of this does get used in practice and they are all better than ARCAD defaults. The electrical fixtures and fittings get used here and there. Their electrical schedule is quite good. It just takes a little bit of time to get used to and break down and understand. Their custom tools for actually documenting double GPOs, single GPOs and everything to Australian standards is phenomenal. So it does and will get used if you download it. Now, the plumbing fixtures in 4D library are significantly superior. For example, the multi 4D shower is one of the best shower objects I've ever found for Archicad. There is not a better object on the market that I've used or experienced. And this object alone will make your drawings significantly better on plan compared to any shower available in Archicad. It gets into the nitty gritty as well for the accessories like the toilet roll holder and the mirrors, which are all very useful and as well with the nitty gritty in the 2D detailing. The remainder of this section is very much about the architectural documentation and the construction detailing, going into your 2D symbols and your calculators, many of which don't get used in practice for me because it's more so about the CI tools and the keynotes but they're still available as a full all-in-one library package from 4D. The standard notes, again, just something that you can add as are the zones and labels as well as allowing you to create custom components like this Rondo sync. The last available folder in 4D library is 30.0 macros, which is basically a behind the scenes folder that allows 4D library to operate properly and you do not basically have to utilize or look into that folder ever. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, check out the playlist to the side of me for more great architectural content. If you loved the video, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below and don't forget about the like button as well. Every little bit helps with the YouTube algorithm. Anyway, for now, I'll see you next Monday.